Hello, Melanie. Welcome. Hello, Kat. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming here. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and talk to me. My pleasure. Let me just introduce you uh, to my audience. So if there are some people who still don't know Melanie Moore, uh, she's the UK leading vision board expert and award-winning coach. She inspires her client to tap into their big vision and give give them the mindset tools to change the trajectory of their life. She helps people at the crossroads in their life to get clear on their big vision and then to commit to this vision by taking bold action towards their goals and creating their dream life. She is the host of the weekly show Tapping with Mel and the creator of Transformational Neural Technique, a unique pro- process that clears the past, which then clears the path to their lasting transformation that can happen. Melanie is on a mission to help millions of people to dream bigger, think bigger and act bigger. That's a really big mission. It is. I, that's the thing. I, I just don't think people dream big enough. I think a lot of people react to what life gives to them, but don't actually spend time to think, well, what is it I want out of life? And it's, it doesn't take long to spend some time to ask. Because not many people sit and ask themselves, what do I want for the rest of my life for my relationships? What do I want my health to look like? What do I want you know, my 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, my retirement, you know, I don't believe in retirement, but what do I want my old age to look like? I think about it a lot. I think about being an old person. I know it sounds like a weird thing to think about, but when I look at my parents and they've got health issues, my dad's got dementia, my mum's got quite severe mobility issues. And it makes me think, what do I need to do now so that my, so that i have all my mental faculties and I'm mobile and active into my 80s and my 90s I think about stuff like that now so anyway yeah that's great I think a lot of the time people don't want to think about those things because they're actually worried right about what their future brings so they choose to just kind of escape from that we do we have lots of things like oh it's all downhill from here you know um Mm. and I don't I just think I just I'm looking forward to the rest of my life that it's just going to get better and better I'm excited that's an amazing attitude I love that (laughs) so please tell me there's something that I'm just really curious about your kind of personal life I was wondering what is your morning routine like and do you find that it changes and fluctuates either with the seasons of the year or maybe with your personal cycle or what what does it look like for you totally um it changes it definitely changes with the seasons because I naturally rise earlier in the summer months when, you know, I love the summer months, but it's when I feel the most energized and I want to get out of bed early. I'm often up by five in the summer months. Um, But in the winter months, I kind of nurture that, you know, in in nature, animals hibernate in winter winter, and they they need that kind of coziness. You need um, warmth and you need to... So I don't want to be leaping out of bed at 5 a.m. in the morning in the winter, but I will sit in bed and I will do some journaling. Um, Something I do do every morning throughout is a visualization exercise and tapping as well. And and it could be, you know, and my script, sometimes sometimes I tap with my own YouTube videos, which (laughs) which is a little bit weird. And sometimes I just quit. I, sometimes I just create my own scripts, just set some intentions. So I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment. And um, so I've been tapping and affirming, feeling well. And just, and even though I've been unwell, I've not been unable to do anything. I've just had to be a lot more gentle with myself the last two weeks. I've still been out. I've still been doing things. But I know that come the evening, I'm really tired and I need to go to sleep. Whereas normally I just work. I often work late into the night because I'm naturally, I'm naturally, you talk about being, talk about doing a morning routine. I'm naturally a night owl and Mm -hmm. I, I come to life at night. I often get ideas and you'll often find me on my computer, um, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And yeah, I wear my blue light glasses and, and it's not every night, but I am, I'm very, I don't really like routine. And I don't really like um, um, structure and things to be organized, even though I know that is the best way to live. I like spontaneity. I like fluidity. 
And, and I just like to move with how my moods change, you know, go with my mood, go with my energy flow. But that's me. And I sometimes I really I'm quite envious. Like my daughter, she loves the morning routine. She's very strict, very structured. She's 15 years old, you know, yeah. for goodness sake. And I really admire that. But me, I like a bit more fluidity with my mornings. But tapping and a visualization I do every single day. That's great. And then, you, you know, your visualization, do you do it just once a day in the morning or um, do you add it throughout the day or in the evening as well? Bedtime as well. Bedtime um, as well. I want the last thoughts before I, before I slip into sleep unconsciousness mm. um, to be a, an image or a thought of things I want to manifest in my future. So it could just be an intention for the following day. Or it could be, you know, dreaming about my future home. You know, I've got this vision one day when my children are grown up to live by the sea. And, mm. and yeah, so I always make the last thought before sleep just a positive image for the future. And when you, like, do a, a session of visualization, do you just focus on, on one idea, one vision, or you allow yourself, like, a few areas of your life? Um, it depends. In the morning... I often take myself through a little mind movie of my vision board. So I've got things that focus on my relationships, um, things, my children, um, some personal goals that I have, you know, within the next 12 months. So it's like a, it, it, I just, I take myself through my vision board, which is just only got a few images on it at the mm -hmm. moment. And so that's every morning I do that. And at night, I'll probably just focus on one thought before I go to bed. And when you visualize, do you also do the thing that you generate the, the feelings? Yes. Yeah, I really, because I think I naturally get to that feeling anyway. The vision gives yeah. me that feeling. So because I've been doing it for so long now, it's just almost like a habit, mm. just like second nature that I think about what I want and it makes me feel good. Because it, it, I'm just mentioning this because I used to use visualization for many years, but actually that was a key component that was missing for me that I would just imagine the thing. But mm. now I know that you have to generate those feelings. The feeling is the secret, right? In the words yes. of Neville Goddard, that like you have to generate the feelings that you would feel when the thing that you dream of happening. So I just thought I mentioned that. Um, Definitely. I, I and, that, you know, we'll talk more about feelings later, but it's so important yeah. to the manifestation process because it's usually our feelings that are blocking the manifestation that's right. Yes, but we'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll to come that. to that. Yeah, we'll come to that. Like you say. Um. So, could you tell me how did your journey with EFT began, and uh, when did you decide to become a practitioner? Um, I guess it kind of, I just kind of goes back before EFT a bit. So, when I was pregnant with my son, he's actually almost eighteen, unbelievably. Um. So, yeah, uh, kind of about nineteen years ago when I found out I was pregnant with him, I read a book called The Gentle Birth Method. And it was, and there was a big chapter in the book about visualizing your dream birth experience. And I would listen to this every day. Um, it's like a CD, just mm -hmm. listen to this, you know, messaging. Um, and then after I had my son, oh, so when I was pregnant with my son, I also, that's when I first started doing yoga, pregnancy yoga. And I feel that I had a, a spiritual awakening then when I was pregnant. So that kind of led me down the path um, of I was having regular um, reflexology, Reiki treatments. And then when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided to train to become a Reiki practitioner. Then I became a reflexologist. So I was very into suddenly learning about chakras mm. and energy and um, crystals and angels. And so I was having a real awakening and it was during my reflexology training that I was, I learned about the law of attraction and manifesting and I read The Secret and I first discovered EFT and I didn't train it immediately, but that's when I first discovered it. And so after I had my daughter, you know, up till then I was working in the corporate world doing IT recruitment in the city. Um, I decided that I wanted to start my own business and I wanted to leave my corporate job. And because I'd read The Secret, I had kind of just learned about manifestation. So that was what came first, really, learning about manifesting. And, um, and it, was a, it was kind of a fun story that um, one of the, the, the first thing and one of the biggest things I manifested 
was money, which is why I've always kind of had an interest in the link between money and tapping. It's, it's kind of, so I'm just kind of sharing this kind of background story as mm-hmm. quick as I can. That's okay. And, and, um, and what I wanted more than anything then was to stay at home and be with my children. I didn't want to be going out to work every day and not see them. My biggest, and this is, you know, and our vision changes at different times in our life. My big vision then was to take my kids to school every day and pick them up from school every day and be there for them, attend sports events. I wanted to be there for their, all the while they were tiny. And the only way I could see that happening was leaving my corporate career. And the only way I could see leaving my corporate career was to get some money. So I got super clear on what I wanted, which was to leave my job. And the next thing I wanted, to, that it was the amount of money. I thought £20,000 um, is what I need in order to comfortably leave my job so I can start my business. Then I kind of got thinking, well, how can £20,000 come to me? So the only way I could think of was that, you know, being on a game show. And so I applied to be on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire because I was visualizing. We talk about the feeling mm-hmm. and the seek and the feeling and the vision. I visualized being on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire every day on my journey to work because I drove past the studios where it was filmed and I could feel the feelings in my body. I felt the nervousness. I felt the excitement. I felt, I imagined exactly what it'd be like to be on the show. Anyway, to cut a long story short. I applied to get on the show. I got on the show and I won £20,000, which was the amount of money that about six months earlier I'd said to the universe, I just need £20,000 um, and then I will leave my job. The funny thing is the universe listens to what I really wanted was to not go to work anymore. Yeah. And I got made redundant from my job. My boss made me redundant. And I actually ended up getting a really generous redundancy settlement. Amazing. This was before I went on the show because... I kind of, I feel like the universe was kind of saying to me that even if we give you this money, you may still not leave your job. So it was like saying, you know, we're going to remove that job from you and we're still going to look after you. You're going to be fine. And I did. I won £20,000 and that was, I picked up my last corporate paycheck in October 2009 and I've been running my own business ever since. So, so the next step for me was I, I discovered EFT actually, funny enough, through getting migraines each month and I remember oh god what's that tapping thing I learned on the reflexology because it's the thing reflexology is great and it can really help with headaches yeah but it's difficult to do reflexology on yourself yes yeah <laughs> however tapping I could do on myself so I was like wow this is amazing and then it helped me with hay fever symptoms and I just did these off YouTube videos um I can't even remember who it was it wasn't Brad I know you know Brad is our mutual friend yeah. but um I've I just just doing these tapping and um, videos and it was my headache symptoms disappeared my hay, my um hay fever symptoms disappeared I thought right that's it okay I've got to learn tapping now and then I added it as another therapy to my holistic therapy practice and and back then I was helping mainly women on their pregnancy journey trying to get pregnant so then when I started adding tapping to it I found that my clients were getting quicker results with tapping than they were with with reflexology and with um reiki whilst they still loved it it was they loved tapping because it was something they had control over that they could then do it themselves when they got home so so sorry long answer to your question that's that's how i got into tapping Beautiful. I love that story. And I love your story of the who wants to be a millionaire. Like, <laughs> I know. It's just, I love sharing. It's yeah, such a fun story. And it, it is so good. It's just so, it's the truth. And, and plus, because that really opened my mind to like that money can be manifested. Money isn't something that we have to work hard for. Yes, we work for our money, but money can come to us in all sorts of wonderful ways. If we get the vision and the feeling and all those ingredients right, it's magic how it works. So could you speak a bit more about the manifestation then since you are actually a manifestation coach? That's another thing that evolved, right, out of your, of, through your career. So could you yeah. just tell us like in the simplest, uh, the most simple terms possible, like what is manifestation about and how do you do it? Manifestation is the, um, is the byproduct of something that you keep thinking about. And so we're manifesting all the time. 
I manifested this cup of tea before our call because my dominant thought was I need a cup of tea while I'm on this call because my throat's a little bit dry. And um, and I made it happen, you know? Yeah. That was a manifestation. But we manifest other things as well. The things, um, and obviously let's talk about the things we want to manifest. So back in my early career, you know, when I was doing the reflexology Reiki, as I said earlier, I'd also read the secrets into the law of attraction. I did little vision board um, evenings on the side with my existing clients. They used to come around to my home and we would make vision boards together. because I'd, I'd be like, right, okay, what is it you want to manifest? And very often then it was babies. I want to manifest a baby. I want to manifest being pregnant. And, and so that was kind of my client base back then. But then I, as my clients' babies were being born, they were getting older, my children were getting older, I was then thinking about what I wanted. So I then incorporated lots more into it. And then, so I had two parts of my business, my holistic therapy practice, and then also the vision boards. They were two very separate. And then I did them more regularly. I then hired hotels and venues. I did much bigger um, events. And then about six years ago, I combined the two together and I rebranded my business, Tapping Into Your Big Vision. Mm -hmm. And um, because I realized, oh my gosh, I was doing these vision board workshops. I was doing tapping here. I thought, why am I not combining them? I suddenly saw this huge, it was like, you know, when it's just there in front of your face. And that suddenly thought, makes sense. It made total sense. And now you can't do a vision board without tapping with me now. It's now a three part process. And I know we'll talk more about that in a minute, but it's it's almost like the vision board now is the, the least important part of the process. You shouldn't even make a vision board unless you're prepared to include tapping and other work with it. Okay, so could you tell us how does uh, EFT tapping helps with the manifestation process? Well, you know, as I said earlier, um, you know, yes, go back to who wants to be a millionaire. Or in fact, who wants to be a millionaire wasn't even my goal. My goal was to stay at home with my children. Um, I had to get clear on what I wanted. Um, but then... There had to be some letting go first. And actually, in order to sit home and look after my children, I had to let go of my job, um, my corporate career. I had to free up the space for it. Um, when I then took my business online, because my business is 99% online now, mm -hmm. I had to let go of my one-to-one -one practice. Um, now, I, I still do see some clients one-to-one, -one, but um, it's people who work with me very intensively for specific goals but mostly now it's courses it's my membership community my work is all online I don't see you know some people say oh can I come see you one-to-one that's -one? like no we do on zoom or I do a lot of group coaching mm -hmm. um that's yeah oh, sorry I forgot the question it's okay um, how how can EFT help with the manifestation yes yeah, so um Firstly, yeah, it's the letting go piece. I think sometimes it's like, okay, what do I need to let go of in order for what it is I want to manifest? And sometimes it could be something like, I need to let go of my job. I need to let go of um, a, 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 but yeah, I need to let go of something. Mm -hmm. But usually is I need to let go of a belief, a belief that it's possible. I need to let go of um habits I need to let go of kind of toxic emotions lower vibratory emotions um so we need to kind of do letting go first and sometimes people think you know I want to manifest my soulmate okay so first bit is need to do some you need to do some letting go first you perhaps need to heal your heart I need to let go of any resentment I have any hurt around past relationships if you've had your heart broken mm -hmm. you need to heal your broken heart first or like the belief that all the good men are taken or the old men yeah. are off all of that mm -hmm. yeah all the good men are gone that's mm -hmm. a classic belief mm -hmm. um or all the good women or whatever mm -hmm. um so yeah it, it's letting go first if you want to um and i know this is your specialism if you want to transform your body get to your ideal body weight there's a lot of probably old forgiveness stuff. Forgiveness is a big piece of this as well. Who do I need to forgive? And that's why, you know, I deeply and completely love and forgive myself is a key phrase in tapping. People forget that forgiveness is letting go. Mm. It's like, I'm not going to let that person, that event, that thing that happened all those years ago have any hold on me anymore. I forgive that person. I forgive that whole situation 
because that is letting go as well. So, um, so, so the tapping obviously is huge with forgiveness. And, um, but then also once we've made the vision board, it's what comes next as well. Other beliefs crop up, um, feeling worthy and deserving of having the things, you know, who am I to be having all this? Mm. Something that came up in a client, one of my group calls last night was, you know, if I have what I want, that might make other people feel bad. Or if I'm living this amazing life and others around me aren't, it doesn't seem fair. So Mm. when we talk about, you know, we talk about the scales of justice, you know, think, is it fair for me to have all this wonderful stuff when people really close to me are suffering? Um, That can kind of keep us... I had that come up in my private session with a client yesterday and she just suddenly was like, oh my God, every time when I do something that I want to do and it's good for me, someone else suffers. And so like that was like a huge light bulb moment. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's an ongoing journey, this work, because we things come up for us. And so basically then... we, we use EFT to just clear the things that block us on the way of the things that we want to reach, achieve and manifest. Yeah. yeah. It's clearing, it's letting go, it's forgiveness, it's then resetting the intention, which is why I love to work with the moon cycles because... Mm we get opportunity every month to let go and to reset the intention because stuff builds up Mm -hmm. and it's a continuous journey of letting go. And sometimes big things come up, think, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was something that was affecting me still. Mm. And then it's like, okay, okay, I really need to let go of that. And it could be an old limiting belief, but we can get stuck in the past and, and I don't think we need to stay there. I think it's much better to keep your thoughts focused on what you want, but then sometimes we'll hit a little block and we need to do a bit of investigation work. Well, why, why does that block keep coming up for me? And then it's releasing. And sometimes we have to push through resistance to get stuff done. And, and I think resistance is kind of a way of keeping us a bit safe and a bit in our comfort zone. But sometimes it's like, you know, getting out of bed on a cold morning. Mm. It's much nicer to stay in yes. bed. But it's like, right, that's it. I'm just going to, um, in the words of Mel Robbins, I'm going to count down five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to jump out of bed and I'm just going to get that stuff done. Yeah. And and it's, yeah, and for me, it's about honouring those cycles as well. Sometimes I have to push a bit harder to get mm-hmm. stuff done, and sometimes it just flows. And I know that sometimes when I get a bit stuck, it's like just do it. You know, maybe call a friend for some accountability, or and and I don't really believe in this. It's like if I don't do this, I'm going to you know, and I don't mean like a bad punishment, like a fun punishment. Like I'm, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do this if I don't do that. If I don't hold my to, to my word. But I actually prefer the reward to pull you forwards instead. I have here on uh, on my wardrobe um, a, a sticky note that says, make decisions from the place where you want to be. And so yeah, that's, that's kind good. of a new thing that I've heard um, on some webinar like a few weeks ago, and it just really sticks with mm. me. So like when you don't feel like getting out of the bed on a cold morning, but you mm. want to make sure you have a space to work out. So you're thinking of that yourself in a future that is more fit more healthy and like what would she do would she stay in bed or would she get out so we've been talking quite a bit about blocks and then so from your experience what do you find that are like the most common blocks and limiting beliefs that stops people from manifesting the life they want I know Um, that there are a lot of them but like if you've noticed some that that are yeah key ones yeah key one I'd say um not good enough Mm -hmm. don't feel good enough um and worthy and deserving mm. and um and i think another big one is guilty feeling i feel guilt because when i have this and others don't have it that makes me feel guilty and guilt mm. is really low really you know it's down there with shame yeah. and and we we don't want to feel guilty so rather than going there we just stay just, where we are don't do it instead and therefore I won't feel the need to feel guilty Mm. and so you know like once when we when we realize um say that I realized I have a block that I'm not good enough because some such and such thing happened to me and then I'm using EFT and I'm using it's okay using EFT and visualization to like work towards my goal and so you know I keep repeating the process like how do you know when the old belief is gone and the new belief has been like positively like uh, installed into your your being um how do you recognize it 
I, I don't know if it's something that happens instantly, like a light bulb moment, but it's something that becomes a gradual realization. Mm-hmm. Is I used to be a really bad worrier. Um, I used to worry. It's a bit like, yeah, I used to worry an awful lot. I used to stay awake worrying about things. But I can say that about 95% of that characteristic has gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a human being and I still get the occasional worries, but I don't spend night after night worrying about the same thing. Um, and and I had to do some work around letting go of this identifying as a person who worries. And I think it's a bit like exercise. Like you don't go to the gym and the next day and say, oh, I'm fit. I can yeah. do a chin up or I can yeah. do 20 press ups. It's a gradual muscle strengthening and then you suddenly realize, oh, wow, you know, I'm a runner. I just ran a marathon. Mm-hmm. You know, a year ago, I couldn't even run around the block. It takes consistent daily work. And I think that's when you get this realization that I'm not the person that I was anymore. I don't have that belief anymore. Um, I used to get really nervous before I did a Facebook Live. Yeah. And it only came from doing it regularly that, I could just, I remember, I said, oh, it took me about an hour to press go live. And yeah. um, I was like, oh, I can't do this. And then I'd be sweating. And then, and then I feel, um, then even I couldn't listen back to myself. Oh my God, that just sounds awful. Mm. But with practice, um, I became really comfortable doing it. And now I'm quite happy to listen to my, and that fact is important to listen to myself. I think, oh, how can I make it better next time? Yeah. I'm doing, certainly with my YouTube channel as well. Now, I just hit record and sometimes you heard the dog just now. Sometimes there's a little shit walking in the background or mm. something's happened. I think I just have to let go of that perfectionistic tendency that or like that your, would have... your crooked frame. Yeah, my crooked frame, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in the past, I thought, oh, you can't, I can't do that. Mm. And then that just delays you all over again. Mm. To this day, things are not perfect in my business. Things aren't perfect in my life. But you just carry on. You just you keep taking action mm. because perfection doesn't exist. There will always be a mistake. And I think perfection is a bit, you know, it's an unattainable goal. goal so why even bother to strive for it? Mm-hmm. One of the, one of the, the thing that I kind of notice in myself and then I notice that in my clients and also my friends who I have like, um, you know, those more deep friendships when we talk about personal development and things like this and so what I find is uh, quite a good indicator for the fact that you start shifting away from your old beliefs is that you gain compassion towards yourself and you start having more like understanding towards the way that you behave and like just forgiving to yourself comes easier do you do you do you agree with that or you have any thoughts on this definitely um and I think that ties hand in hand with self-love mm. um you know again I deeply completely love and accept myself a core phrase of tapping and I think I've got to the point where I've said it so often in either tapping with the clients or just tapping for myself that everything I do now comes from a place of love for myself um it's like I am the relationship with me is the most important relationship in my life yeah. in terms of nurturing myself in terms of taking time out for myself, for self-care. Like, you know, if you want your car to run well, you've got to look after it. You've got to put petrol in it. You've got to service it. You've got to maintain it. And our bodies, just as I said, you know, earlier when I look at my parents' health, if I want to be fully functioning when I'm 80, 90 years old, it's how I look after myself physically, you know, exercise, the food I put in my body. But how I feel as well, my emotional well-being is so important. If Mm. I'm not feeling good, my body's telling me something. Something needs to change. And I go to the spa nearly every weekend. And it sounds really indulgent, but... Sounds amazing. (laughs) I I got this membership, so I'm a member, so I can go whenever I want. So my partner and I, we go most weekends and, and... it's, it's almost like a non-negotiable for me mm. now, spending quality time with my partner. You know, we only see each other at the weekends. We don't live together. We've both got children. Um, you know, during the week, my work, my kids come first. But the weekends, I come first. Yes. <laughs> my happiness. 
So yeah, self-compassion, self-love and and what's the point of beating yourself up for a mistake mm. or something that went wrong or even thinking about things that happened years ago, mistakes you made. Nothing is a mistake. Everything happened exactly as it should. The broken heart, the the things that went wrong, it was all meant to happen for me to learn mm. and to grow from. You know, without any of that, I wouldn't have grown. And I think there's so much beauty. I, I, I see it all as a gift now. And I think that is the transformation for me. I see a gift in everything. You know, I lost my car keys or I was late. My lesson there is right now, you need to be a bit more organized. Mm. How can I become more organized? Um, something that's really annoying me at the moment. And, you know, I'm quite, yeah. this is something I'm in the moment. I normally share these things afterwards. I take far too long to decide what to wear in the morning um, uh-huh. especially if I'm going to an event or I'm doing something and I'm so annoyed myself you need to get more organized Mel get rid of the clothes that you don't want to wear anymore um, and maybe just like right decide the night before I'm going to wear this tomorrow because you know this is just something that's come to me today mm-hmm. so I'm showing you this now mm-hmm. so rather than just get annoyed with myself I thought okay I'm going to do something about this I'm going to it's a bit like meal planning. I'm going to do yeah, wardrobe planning yeah. and decide this is what I'm going to wear. Because weather's got cold. We've got, you know, now I think about thermals yeah, and no, stuff. And the, um, you know, the decision fatigue is a real thing. So if yes. you can, if you can, um, you know, pre-plan some decisions uh, the day before, mm. that's a really, that's a good shout. Definitely. So that's just something I'm implementing yeah. in my life, you know, right now. <laughs> so I think like you kind of like, gave another answer to, to this question so like one of another ways you know that you you no longer are ruled by that past belief is when you realize well actually you know there's no point being myself up because it happened because it was a lesson right we're no longer like like oh my god this happened I'm so poor poor me but like actually um, you know there was a lesson in it and I think people who are either depressed or anxious or live in that kind of lower vibrational state um it's because they're living in the past they're living you know based on, you know, decisions they've made in the past, mistakes, they've, and they kind of keep going back there. Sometimes I hear my mum doing that. She'll talk about things that happened like 30 years ago. Mum, mm. that 30 years ago. Let go. Don't even give it any energy now, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think, yes, definitely live in the future is much better. <laughs> so, you know, like I think you kind of answered this as well, but I'll see if you have anything else to add. Like, so from all this time on working in, in, in this environment, in the holistic and personal development, like what do you think is the most important lesson or two that you learned over this time in your career? So mm. I feel like loving and accepting yourself was that's what you kind of said. But, you know, if there's anything else that you find is just so important when you're working Um, on personal development yeah definitely self-love and compassion self-acceptance self-awareness um but also um I kind of you know I like to talk about the four pillars of the vision and I think about my life in terms of what does my abundance my work look like um because it's that's a big important pillar but then what does my health look like and it's what am I doing things for my health every day? My environment, you know, that's another important thing. Um, you know, places that I want to travel to, car I drive, my home, and then the relationships, super important. You know, I've talked about my children a lot, mm. my partner, parents, you know, friendships, really important to me. It's like, what can I do every day that's going to improve my environment, my relationships, my health? Because this is the ongoing work. It's like daily activities. And, you know, for a long time, I neglected the relationship pillar. You know, my marriage had ended and and my focus was purely my children. But then during lockdown, it's like, oh, okay, maybe it's time to think about a relationship. And and then actually, it's really important who we spend our time with as well. So and and when we shouldn't let it get to the state where we only focus upon our health because we've had a diagnosis or because suddenly we're not feeling great anymore. It's like, what can I do every day to maintain a healthy lifestyle? Mm. So, so that's for me has become, you know, holistically at your whole life and always pay attention to the four pillars Mm -hmm. every day. And it's like, what can I do to, you know, make my business healthier Mm. and, you know, bring in, attract more clients, 
um how can I do things differently in my business mm. you know and it's like how am I feeling you know am I a bit bored of what am I doing and actually maybe I feel like doing something a bit different in my business what can I do in my business that feels fun and enjoyable and will bring me abundance as well mm-hmm. yeah so they're the, the four pillars I find are very important wonderful thank you because it's really easy to just get overly focused on one thing right when one thing totally I have experienced that so much and also like in my manifestation and law of attraction experiences that like oh like I really need to focus on my money now and then my health is falling so I put my attention on my health and actually then the money is slipping or like something's going on in my relationship or I'm neglecting people that are close to me so Mm -hmm. yeah it's really good actually focusing on those awful pillars but it takes work no do you find it hard or is it it just became like quite natural I think for you it to... become it, it, it's just become a habit a positive habit that's something I just kind of like to kind of just and some think okay if I haven't done anything this day or if I'm feeling a little bit off balance what area of my life have I neglected and sometimes you can just neglect things for a couple of weeks and you feel the impact already so for me I don't like to neglect it for too long um and yeah just make sure right let's get back on track perhaps you know I've not spent enough time with my kids because they're a bit old they're teenagers now I think actually no I need to spend some really quality time with them right so I did my daughter a couple of nights ago we had an evening no phones just talking connecting and just really you know being present and and it's same for them with me as well because they can kind of like you know um it's vice versa right kids I think you need to spend your time yes. time with your mum yes yeah yeah of course teenagers right <laughs> yeah Okay, so I have some uh, more like practical EFT questions for you. Those are the questions that I often hear from my clients and people around me. So I thought it'd be nice if we address and I'm also just really curious of um, your opinion on this. So in your opinion, um, how often during the day you should practice EFT? Yeah, I get this asked a lot as well. I think do it as often as feels good. Mm-hmm. You know, I had one client, bless her, she was tapping like all day, every day. And, the, and I said, like, no, I said, you don't have to tap every day. She's like, don't I? I said, no. She's like, oh, thank goodness for that. Because it was becoming a bit of a chore for yeah. her. I said, if it's becoming a chore, stop it. I like to tap in the morning, sometimes in the evening. And I, 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 I do this thing called tapping prescriptions that I will often prescribe mm. up to three different rounds of tapping sometimes you might just want a round of tapping just to get you have a good good start to the day um and and sometimes you might be working on a money goal so you might want to add that to it as well but sometimes you might want to work on an actual limiting belief say if you've got a poor relationship with time and that's something that's always been a problem for you um tap away that belief but that but when I talk about tapping those beliefs you're going to want to tap with the same script between 30 to 90 days because that's how long you know you talk about how the gradual change Mm -hmm. it's neuroscientists have said it takes uh, 68 days is the um the magic amount of time increased from 21 didn't well 21 (laughs) 30 68 um i think it's fluid i say up to 90 days sometimes more if it's like a really deep rooted Mm -hmm. you know say if your story is that you're a clumsy person and you've always been told as a child you're a clumsy person. Is that really an identity you want to live with the rest of your life? If you bring awareness, that actually, I, I want to change that identity. A bit like me with being a worrying, a worried mm-hmm. person. That was an identity that I gradually shifted away from um, over a period of time. Again, maybe with being a confident public speaker. Most people are terrified by the thought of public speaking. But it's just a practice you know, you learn to become confidence is a practice. Not everyone is born confident. Mm -hmm. There was many times I would probably considered myself a bit shy, more shy, or not, you know, and, and it's like the internal stories as well. It might be the story that I'm not a very good communicator, or you tell yourself the story that nobody really wants to listen to what I have to say, or um, I don't have a very magnetic personality, you know, these think okay these are all stories for you to work on to tell yourself a new story and it's just tapping away that old belief I'm letting go of this belief now Mm. that you know letting go of this fear of public speaking letting go of this belief that no one will listen to me when I talk so we tap to let that go and then tap in the new story Um, I'm a great public speaker people love when I stand up and talk people 
really want to hear what I have to say and you know then affirm that but you're gonna need to tell yourself that story for 30 60 90 days to really okay I truly believe that now Mm -hmm. um because you're rewiring rewiring those neural pathways to becoming the person that you want to be Mm -hmm. just like the person who can't run a marathon to person who does run a marathon it's the mental training yeah Okay, and so that one also very common. Um, why does EFT focus so much on the negative? What about all the positive affirmation, positive thinking, all that stuff? So just now when I was talking about, you know, before we manifest, we need to let go. Mm-hmm. Um, the negative part is bringing the awareness to the surface because this is the stuff, it's called emotional freedom technique. This is the stuff that's been buried deep. So by bringing it um, to awareness, we are bringing it up and out and we've got to kind of talk it through but rather than traditional therapy where you would just go on and on and on about the past and the things that went wrong we are doing it in quite a quick way we're just maybe focusing on it for a couple of minutes but then the bit is in the classic EFT is you focus on the negative to bring awareness to it then you let go of the negative I'm Mm -hmm. letting go of this Mm -hmm. sadness. I'm letting go of this anxiety. I'm clearing it away now. I'm releasing this sadness from my body. I'm releasing this grief. I'm releasing this pain. Then it's out. And that's when, you know, we can cry. We get emotional Mm -hmm. when we feel the feelings. And then we end it on the positive. I choose to feel at peace now. I choose to feel calm. I choose to know all is well. I choose to know that everything's working out for me. All is well in my body. I choose to feel peaceful and happy and joyful. So we end with a positive. So, mm-hmm. so that's why I hope that clears it up. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I heard uh, this. Um, I heard it on Instagram and some other EFT practitioner. They said that, like, you know, if you were just using just a positive, they say it's like spraying Febreze on shit. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just like trying to cover up, like, or um, I think Louise Hay said that as well in the interview with Nick Ortner, and she said, like, how can you clean the house if you don't see the dirt? Exactly, right? so and you wouldn't redecorate your home without preparing. For, yeah. And I actually, my favorite analogy is gardening. You wouldn't go and plant seeds or bulbs unless you've taken out all the old weeds, the weeds first, right. unless you prepare the soil. If you just think right I'm just going to go in the garden I'm just going to plant some bulbs on top Mm. of the weeds your garden wouldn't look very nice we need to Mm. clear the ground first so people cannot tap in negative things into themselves right because I think that's what they're worried about that if they repeat those negative things that they're just well if you sat there and just reached that I'm a bad horrible stupid person if you just tap that then yeah that's not good but you we're doing that to bring it up to the surface and then we end with a positive Mm -hmm. so we're, we're saying those words for a reason to release them. That's mm-hmm. the freedom bit of the emotional freedom technique. Mm-hmm. We want to be free of those emotions. And so, you know, if a person does like a, have a sitting and say they use YouTube for the EFT work and they say like, okay, I'm going to give myself half an hour. Do you think it's better um, that they focus on like a one area of their life or they can do just a bit? Of each like a few different problems or a few different spheres of life yeah I uh, that's why I say up to three three tapping scripts mm-hmm. um I think more than that we can get a bit overwhelmed mm-hmm. or we lose our focus but um sometimes you just need one to you know I've got a tapping video tapping to feel more energized mm-hmm. you know so if you're feeling tired I do this one yeah so if you're feeling tired you can really just sink into that story of I'm tired and of course yes we do need sleep Mm. and we do need to rest but there are times when we can cult an energy out of nowhere and I've seen it in the comments that people say oh my gosh I was like about three out of ten energy before I started now like I'm nine out of ten and Mm. I suddenly feel energized and I can do it where did that come from that energy it came from positive self-talk to tell yourself I'm full of energy and I can do this now because our words are really powerful. And if you just tell us a story, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so sleepy. You know, I feel myself yawning just saying yeah, those yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can just change the words and think, right, okay. And then, of course, then factor in time for proper rest later. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when uh, when you tap, do you have to touch the exact points and that say so someone follows you along on YouTube? And do they have to do it with the same hand on the same hand uh, on the same side as you? No, um, 
you can do either sand, either side, it's right, either hand, either side, sometimes both. Sometimes, like I was on the train yesterday and I just, just tapped on my chest quite lightly. Sometimes I do the finger. I don't use them so often, but you can just, I that's a lot more dentist. discreet. Yeah, just, just tap. And sometimes I use the touch and breathe method as well, which, you know, just, and then just say internally, because I think, you know, just touching those points and breathing can be effective as well. Um, and sometimes so if I'm doesn't matter which side. No, no. And sometimes if I'm going to sleep, I'll just say the words in my head um, without any tapping at all. I would just literally just drift off to sleep with the, the tapping script in my head. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me why do we start on most of the time we start on the karate chop point on the side and why we say those things, even though. That's I what I was this. taught. <laughs> Because um, you, you see some practitioners that they just go straight for the points as well. Yeah, and sometimes I do that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I do these 60 second tapping videos on Instagram and mm -hmm. I think they can be really effective as well. And I would just go straight to the points. I think because we do these points for the setup statement and this is where we kind of address the problem. This is almost where we talk the negative out in this bit. So I would say we do that for a a longer round of tapping and it's probably to do with the mm. Chinese meridian point that is associated with that because each of these and I always forget I've got them on my website but each of these is associated with a different emotion so we've mm -hmm. got fear overwhelm overthinking critical thinking but the reason we do all of them is because there are so many layers to um, a round of tapping that it's just to cover all the bases really mm -hmm. and there is also that uh, psychological reversal right that even though I feel this way, that it's not good, I choose to love and accept yes. myself. Right? Yeah, so and sometimes just... I go straight just into the um, the, the choosing mess method. That's something that's Patricia mm -hmm. Carrington. She she passed away, um, I think, a couple of years ago. And, um, and it's like, because it, it's so true, we always have a choice, but people forget that sometimes. So I think she bought that school of thought into tapping and it's a really powerful and sometimes I go straight into that I choose to feel great today I choose to know today's going to be amazing I choose to have a really productive day today so the choices method I love it it's one of my favorite um ways to use tapping it's great I really like it too mm. and then is it what sort of reactions are normal when you do EFT is it okay is it normal to yawn or like burp or feel really tired or sleepy sleepy during sessions Yawning, sleepiness, definitely burping, laughter, sometimes mm -hmm. giggling mm -hmm. is very, these are all release things and, um, and all completely normal. I think yawning is the most common. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's great when you see people yawning because yeah. the shifts are yeah. literally taking place then and there. They often don't even know that, isn't it? Mm, exactly. Mm. And so one of the questions that people sometimes ask me is like, can the EFT help if I had my problem for so many years? So people, some people think that it's just only like on more current issues that we have, but like traumas mm. and like uh, childhood things, like can we use EFT on those? Definitely. Um, I'd go back even further than that. You can use it on past life issues mm. as well. And um, this is not something I um, specialize in. It's something that I've learn and I can do but I tend to do it this is something I do prefer to do in person with people and I tend to do it like with friends actually um do a past life regression mm -hmm. see where that takes us and then um when they come back again tap on what they experience as past life so if people have had past life therapy and no, but still haven't been able to process, then yeah, we can definitely tap on that mm -hmm. stuff as well. So yeah, you know, for example, in my own personal life, I had, um, and I didn't even know it was an issue. And I discovered this on my EFT training, that I, when I was three years old, my mum's from Thailand, she sent me out to Thailand for nine months when I was three, when she had my brother. And, and my earliest memory is being with my aunt in Thailand and feeling really, really homesick, really missing my mum. And I was making an old, you know, cassette recording so she could hear my voice so that it could be posted back to England. Mm -hmm. so obviously, there's, you know, this is like, this was about 1980, I think mm -hmm. 1979, 1980. Mm -hmm. 
And um, that was the only way, you know, telephone calls were really expensive. That was the only way for me to get a message to my mum. And it was such a vivid memory. And when I did my tapping training, I said, look, you know, I, by the way, I had a great time in Thailand. I was really looked after, but I was still physically separated from my mum. And 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 I didn't realise that I'd, that had led to kind of like a lot of separation anxiety issues on my part, um, particularly getting skin conditions like eczema is very closely related to separation anxiety. And as a child, I had terrible eczema. When I started school, I... My, I remember my first day of school, that was another vivid memory. And again, it was my mum leaving me again. And I was, remember holding onto her coat and not wanting her to, because I didn't know she was going to come back or not. Um, so, but yeah, I've worked through all of that with tapping. And now it's like, you know, healing that inner child. And so, yeah, definitely, definitely. We can often, you know, before I work with my clients, particularly, you know, the few that I do with work with one-to-one, I'll ask, so, you know, what's the biggest problem in your life? What's your earliest memory of this pattern starting? And sometimes you've got to think, you know, when did this start? And then it would be usually an event in childhood mm. or patterns, things that kept happening over and over again. And then we go and tap and we heal the root, the the, the earliest, you know, we let go of that. And, and we do some, you know, almost like reimagine the memory of how things were and send forgiveness and healing all the way back through our past and, and all that as well. Amazing how powerful those techniques are, isn't mm-hmm. it? And even, yeah, even I've done work with, you know, Jackie Crooks. You know, we did an event together last year where, you know, Jackie's specialism is helping, you know, people tap on their birth stories as well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was, so here's the funny thing. I was two weeks overdue. My, I didn't want to come out into the world. I, um, my mum had me by a cesarean and I was, yeah, I was cozy in the womb. I didn't want to come out. And I think, yeah, that's probably kind of had this story. I, I kind of, we, we did some work around that, but just I'm yeah. talking about that, I feel that there may be a little bit more clearing to do around that, around, you know, being stuck in comfortable places. <laughs> Not wanting to go out. No. And so, you know, we said um, the EFT is very powerful and uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Do you think that EFT can be harmful? Um, have you heard any examples of? Not really. I would say that it's it's super safe. It's really really safe. Sometimes it can, and I would say if you obviously you want to go do some work on trauma, deep stuff that I would work with an experienced practitioner. I wouldn't just sit there. And there's, you know, I certainly don't have any YouTube videos on dealing with, you know, very old trauma because I know that can probably bring up stuff for people. Yeah. And and I would say find an EFT practitioner who specializes in that zone of genius. You know, my EFT specialism is big vision, helping people mm-hmm. to think about the future, think about big changes they want to make in their lives but if you were sexually abused as a child, I would find somebody who deals in, you know, sexual trauma. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want somebody who's helping, you know, with weight loss, I'd go to someone like you, you know. Um, I would look for EFT practitioners who specialize in, in you know, that area, that yeah. thing that they love. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So basically just a one kind of a warning sign like for deep very painful traumatic memories don't go there alone make sure you you go there with with someone mm-hmm. who's experienced and, and can hold space for you and and support you right i'd even say that you know with phobias as well um there was some you know i've got a tapping video for fear of spiders on my um thing because i felt that that was kind of a safeish area mm-hmm. to to go to but you know if something does come up for you um you know seek help and seek some yeah advice of a of a and you know sometimes people message me to say I had this as a you know child this happened to me and I'll say look I mean I'd love to be able to help everyone but I I can't coach somebody over an email or or a message you know this is stuff that and it's so worthwhile to seek out somebody who can really help you get to the bottom of it because you'll see that when you clear the past you really will transform the future 100% 
And so, you know, like I know you you have a cold and you feel a bit poorly. Um, so I don't know, do you do you fancy doing a bit of VFT or? Yeah, sure. I I, I don't feel too bad actually. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Okay, well, so I was thinking perhaps because we, we, we've talked about, uh, you know, like the most the most common blocks. And so the, the, the main one that we came up with is that not good enough. So I was thinking maybe we could do something on this, but I'm also open to, to your su suggestion. Maybe there's something else that's currently very present for you or you feel that right now there's something that could the world could benefit. Oh, my gosh, the world could benefit from a lot. <laughs> um um yeah no I'm happy to go with um not good enough not um, good enough to reach my my goal my dream or yeah yeah, yeah. okay let's do that um yeah. so I right. will be your echo okay perfect yeah. right let so um I think firstly you know obviously before we start tapping is to think about something that you do want to achieve and um and also what I'm going to because it came up in this conversation mm -hmm. I think I'd also like to add to this about, although, you know, maybe I don't feel good enough that let's add to this, that even though kind of I have it, that, you know, that I deserve it as well. And it's not taking away from somebody else that, um, you know, because I, I really love the Marianne Williamson poem, you know, Our Deeper Sphere. I think I did a short, Insta I did a short Instagram tapping on that is, mm -hmm. is you know, I, I keep it in front of me as a permanent reminder yeah is that um, your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. I think that's a really powerful phrase because <clears throat> sometimes we don't go after what we want is because, you know, we, we feel that I need to keep myself a bit small, yeah. a bit, you know not take up too much space um, because it's going to make other people around me feel bad. But I think, and then going back to that poem, the more we can allow ourselves to be more of who we are, to shine our lights brighter, the more we can show others, you know, that that's possible for them as well. Okay. That we need more people shining their light to be of inspiration to others so that they know that they can do it for themselves too. Does that, Sounds great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, think, I so, think a lot of people will resonate with that. So I think, yeah, I'll try and bring all that into um, this round of tapping. So, okay, okay. Right, here we go. Right. Even though, even though there's a part of me, there's a part of me that has this great big vision, that has this great big vision that wants to do fabulous things, that wants to do fabulous things, that wants to manifest huge abundance, that want, wants to manifest huge abundance. And have great success. And have great success. There's also another part of me. There's also another part of me. That just wants to shrink away from all of that. That just wants to shrink away from all of that. That wants to stay safe. That wants to stay safe. That wants to stay in my comfort zone. That wants to stay in my comfort zone. And even though I feel the push and the pull. And even though I feel the push and the pull. Between these two personalities. Between do, these two personalities. I choose to deeply and completely. I choose to deeply and completely. Love and accept myself anyway. Love and accept myself anyway. Even though there's one part of me. Even though there's one part of me. That has this big vision. That has this big vision. And wants to do all these amazing things. And wants to do all of these amazing things. There's another part of me. There's another part of me. Who feels scared by this vision. Who feels scared by this vision. And even though I feel these two personalities are in conflict. And even though I feel those two personalities are in conflict. I choose to love and honour myself anyway. I choose to love and honour myself anyway. And even though. And even though. I do want to have a big vision. I do want to have this big vision. I also want to stay in my comfort zone. I also want to stay in my comfort zone. Despite this, despite this, I choose to deeply and completely. I choose to deeply and completely. Love, honor, and forgive myself. Love, honor, and forgive myself. For not taking enough action. Say again. For not taking for not enough taking action. For not taking enough action. For not doing the things that I know I need to do. For not doing the things that I know I need to do. 
because I've been keeping myself safe. Because I want to keep myself safe. And I choose to love and accept myself for all of that. And I choose to love and accept myself for all of that. I'm conflicted with these two parts of me. I'm very conflicted with these two parts of me. Who has a big vision. Has a big vision. But also wants to stay in the comfort zone. But also wants to stay in a comfort zone. That wants to shine brightly. That wants to shine brightly. But also wants to hide away. But also wants to hide away. I'm bringing awareness to all of this. I'm bringing awareness to all of this. And I choose to recognize. And I choose to recognize. That this comfort zone. That this comfort zone. Is just my safety blanket. Is just my safety blanket. But I don't need the safety blanket. But I don't need the safety blanket. Because I choose to know. Because I choose to know. That it is safe for me to shine. That it's safe for me to shine. It's safe for me to play this bigger game. It's safe for me to play this bigger game. It's safe for me to become really abundant and successful. It's safe for me to become really abundant and successful. And not only is it safe. And not only is it safe. It's part of my purpose. It's part of my purpose. It's my duty. It's my duty. To bring great light to the world. To bring great light to the world. At a time the world really needs it. At the time that the world really needs it. The world needs more light bearers. The world needs more light bearers. Because when you are full of light. Because when you are full of light. You illuminate the way for others. You illuminate the way for others. So that they can shine brightly too. So that they can shine brightly too. And that's what the world needs right now. And that's what the world needs right now. More people shining their light. More people shining their light. So it starts with me. So it starts with me. Shining my light as brightly as I can. Shining my light as brightly as I can. Some people may choose to be blinded by that light. Some people may choose to be blinded by that light. And some people may choose to be lit up by that light. And some people may choose to be lit up by that light. It will light the fire within them. It will light the fire within them. So it can send the ripple effects out throughout the world. So it can send the ripple effects out throughout the world. So whenever I feel. So whenever I feel. That I'm not good enough. That I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy and deserving. I'm not worthy and deserving. I choose to let that go. I choose to let that go. Because it's just not true. Because it's just not true. What is true. What is true. It's that I am worthy and deserving. It's that I am worthy and deserving. Of living my most wonderful life. Of living my most wonderful life. Shining my light so brightly. Shining my light so brightly. Being of huge service to the world. Being of huge service to the world. So that others can do the same. So that others can do the same. And this feels more comfortable. And this feels more comfortable. Bringing light to the world. Bringing light to the world. Because the world really needs it. Because the world really needs it. And I'm just being of service. And I'm just being of service. And that makes me feel good. And that makes me feel good. This makes me want to leap out of bed in the morning. This makes me want to leap out of bed in the morning. This makes me want to take action. This makes me want to take action. So whenever I feel that way again. So whenever I feel that way again. That I just want to stay in my comfort zone. I just want to stay in my comfort zone. I choose to know that it's safe for me to shine brightly. I choose to know that it's safe for me to shine brightly. Because the world needs it right now. Because the world needs it right now. And I feel really good about this. I feel really good about this. And I choose to take action from this place of feeling good. And I choose to take action from this place of feeling good. In body, mind and spirit. In body, mind and spirit. Okay, deep breath. And exhale. Okay, how was that? How are you feeling? Good, I like it. It was very fitting. Yeah. <laughs> Very so I, I, and people ask me, oh, do you make the, I, I never, I never script them. I literally make them up on the spot. And yeah, I think that was a good one. There is a, something that I have, um, I have found in my, in my EFT practice that 
you kind of sometimes tap into the field, don't you? Because sometimes I, I hear the things that I say and I'm like, wow, this is really good. But I know like it didn't come from my mind. It, it, it just came through me. So mm. like, I, I love it. I love it. Every it time. Yeah. And uh, it's just channeling. It's another form yeah. of, you know, whatever the divine wants to come through you. Yeah. And we are just channels for the divine, you know, songwriters are, artists are, mm. authors are, it doesn't come from them. Where yeah. does inspiration come from? It comes from being in spirit. Spirit comes through you, moves through you. And it happens to use me as a vessel for bringing tapping scripts to the world. Um, it really doesn't come from me at mm. all. So, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I also I also don't, don't script because I don't think I could write anywhere, like anything half as good as That's it why actually comes. I released the crooked yeah, videos yeah, because seen that in I your thought, stories. It was too good, right? I, I couldn't do that yeah. again. So, yeah. it's, sorry, just had to have the crooked picture. In. No, that's okay. That's okay. And you know what? Like the funny thing is, is probably if you haven't said this uh, in your stories, like mm. probably no one would even notice that, or like a one person in a hundred, you know, was like a very. Mm. And funny when I did the poll, probably about two percent of people said re record the videos, and they would be the same people who would notice. And they're the exactly. same people who probably need to let go of their perfectionistic tendencies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's information for them, not for you. Yeah, isn't it? exactly. So as we're starting to wrap up, why don't you tell us what's the plans for Mel for 2023? What's, what's so um, every year I do um, my vision board workshop and um, and this has evolved. I started doing these 10 years ago in my home, you know, but they've evolved so much now. And, and this time I'm actually bringing in some friends as well. We're doing some additional masterclasses. Um, so it's a real, I, I feel there's this energy for 2023 that's a fast energy. Things are going to happen quickly. I think there's going to be things that happen in the world that are just like, oh my gosh, did that happen? Um, but I think we can bring that energy to our personal lives as well. Perhaps there's things that you've wanted to manifest. It's been on your vision board for a long time now. It's like, it's like there's no time to waste now. It's like, right, if you've got visibility issues, let we need to let that go. If you're worried about what people think, it is time. It's time for you to bring your creations, to make the changes. If you've been stuck in a situation for too long now, it's time for change. Um, so that's, the new fresh energy that I'm bringing to this vision board experience. Mm -hmm. So I always do it um, on the, on the first new moon of the year. And, and it happens to be the, um, the 20th, um, 21st and 22nd of June. And I do it. It's a three day January. Yeah. Sorry. January. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> three day experience where the first day is planning. It's getting clear, but I'm actually doing a bonus class issue as well. Just, um, you know, letting go of 20, 22 really preparing um and also when people kind of sign up for it as well they get a section of videos that they can just work on themselves at home like seven videos just to go deeper on clearing some of the old stuff then we get clear on what we want i do a whole vision planning session that's day one day two is like the fun day we make the vision boards together but i start off with a little kind of woo woo ceremony we do another letting go mm -hmm. piece just in case anyone didn't do any letting go before yeah. i need to make sure that everyone has done this letting go piece excuse me and then um and then that's I some people get it done because there's a 90 minute section and and I do this all on zoom now as well and it's amazing how effective it's been and every time I think last one I did I do this twice a year in January and June um I had somebody from every single continent on the world doing it some people in America got up really early to participate and some people in Asia and Australia stayed up really late into the night to finish mm. it. Um, and some people watched the recordings and, you know, did it on the replay because that's available as well. Um, so it's really kind of spending that time together, that group energy is so powerful. And then I give people seven days to finish it. Some people do it in the 90 minutes. They've kind of planned. They're ready. A lot of people do digital images. We do, mm -hmm. do them on Canva or Pinterest. Some people like to have cardboard and glue and scissors. And then the day three, I take people through my vision embodiment session. This is a TNT process where it's a combination of visualization and tapping and the feeling where we really step into a future movie of the vision board as well. And this is a piece that I get people to kind of like, right, listen to this bit every day for 30, 60, 90 days to really embody that vision. 
so that's kind of the whole process now it's and so it's um 90 minutes on day one four to five hours on day two and an hour on day three so it's not three days every day it's not like a big tony robbins event it's i've designed it so it can be fit in you know with your life as well mm-hmm. that sounds amazing and, Yeah, and um, between Christmas and New Year, I'm going to be doing three-day um, manifest a Christmas miracle. That's like a free three-day workshop. So um, I will give you the details separately, so you can, you know, you know, you can share the details. All of um, this you'll be able to find in the description of of this video. Yeah, so. exactly. So yeah, so it's going to be a three-day kind of like a freebie, like a, a mini. It's going to be between. I think it's going to be 27th, 28th, 29th of December. Mm-hmm. I just find that's things have calmed down for a lot of people in that time that I think it's called Twixtmas isn't it between Christmas and New Year mm-hmm. and it's just gonna be gentle just like an hour a day to get people to ignite to spark up that you know what do I want for next year mm-hmm. just you know when we talk about earlier about having some time for yourself you know this is you know free to attend and it's just going to give you that time to spark up that that magic And to see like how you work with with this sort yeah. of things, yeah? yeah, brilliant. So before we end, if you could share like a one last piece of advice with our listeners about how you can manifest what you desire into your life. Okay, the <laughs> key thing that I would always say is get really clear on what you want, and because I said you know we're manifesting every minute of every day. And, you know, at the beginning of the day, it's like, what do I want to manifest today? And sometimes you might just need to manifest, you know, hour by hour. What do I want this in this next hour? Get super intentional. Um, so get really clear on what you want. And the next thing is feel good on the journey. Because feeling good isn't the destination. Happy, you know, happiness is not, you know, such a cliche quote, you know, Happiness is the ultimate goal that we all want. We just want to feel happy mm-hmm. and joyful and in alignment. There are so many celebrities and rich people who have all the material stuff in their vision board, but they still end up committing suicide because there's something fundamentally they're not happy about. Mm. The happy, the daily happiness, the things that bring you joy every day is such an important, it's like they go hand in hand together. Get clear on what you want and feel good on the journey to having what you want. So what can I do that's going to bring me joy today um, and focus on that? Um, gratitude is another one. I know it's very classic, everyone talks about it, but it's like, what can I be really, you know, just stop and like, oh, what do I feel really grateful for right now? Just five things and and just that gratitude. Oh my God, it can really just lift you up because in our busy lives, we can forget the gratitude we can mm. forget that right now it's a gorgeous blue sky the sun's shining and um and yeah and, and sometimes I just sit and cuddle my dog on the sofa and think oh this is just so lovely there's nowhere I'd rather be right now than sitting cuddling my dog on the sofa um just to find joy in every day so yeah that's that, my advice thank you there is a reason why most of like spiritual and personal development teacher keeps harping on the gratitude isn't it because it works and it's really fundamental and right? sometimes people get impatient with that yeah, and I know. just like oh i can't be bothered you know think yeah. because we're in such a rush to yeah. get what they want and, and also people think it's too too simple and too basic to work right so here's in one thing i always like to ask my clients mm-hmm. is you know if you had all the money time and resources in the world um what would you be spending the afternoon doing? And um, and for me, my answer is nearly always, I just love to bake a cake from mm-hmm. scratch and sit down again on my sofa with a slice of that warm cake and actually read a book, mm-hmm. not an audible, not anything. Because that for me, it's taken time to make that cake. You get to enjoy that cake. And I love reading but I don't have to wait until I'm a multimillionaire to do that. I can do that right now. It's yeah. a real simple pleasure. What can you, you know, ask me, what would you do? Most of the time, it's something that you can actually do today. Mm. So I would say put some time in your schedule and do it. That's great. I'm really, I'm learning this right now. So it's a, it's a good takeaway for me to, to actually think about it in this way. What would I be doing if I was already really successful? 
Yeah. Thank you so much, Melanie. That was amazing. Please tell us where people can find you online. Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Melanie Moore EFT. Also on Instagram, Facebook at I am Melanie Moore. I've also got a free Facebook group as well. I'm just called Tapping Into Your Big Vision, free community. But yeah, any of those, you can send me a direct message and eventually I'll reply. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Um, Thank you so much for having me, Kat. It's lovely talking to you. I hope you feel better very, very soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.